Hey y'all, what's up? It's your girl Nye and I'm back with a new gem today. Today I'm going to be walking you guys through step by step how to design website photos for any brand that you're working with. In today's example, I'm going to be using a fashion brand, but you can use these same steps that I'm showing you guys today for a cosmetics brand, for a t-shirt company, for selling electronics, or anything of the sort of how to make your website photos look professional and aesthetic. So don't worry. I got y'all in this new gym. Let's jump right into it. So the very first thing you will do when you go to Canva is you will click create a design, custom size. And for this example and what I've used when I've designed my Shopify or, or Wix websites, I use a 2000 by 800 width um, pixels and you're going to click create new design. So this is the workspace that we're working with. Trust me, this works well with both Shopify and Wix. And I'm pretty sure it works well with any other website designing that you're doing. But if not, you can always modify the sizing later. So once you get your blank workspace open, this is what you'll be looking at. I'm going to upload some images that I did get from Pexels.com. You guys have heard me mention Pexels plenty of times before. You can get free stock free photos using for any website that you want to design or anything that you're designing in general. I always recommend checking out Pexels because like I said, it's free. They're stock free photos and they work amazing. So I'm going to show you guys how I'm working with these four. Again, this example is a fashion designing website. So I am designing for a potential fashion designer. So we've got four different photos. We've got a sweater in purple and a sweater in brown. And as you can see, the model has them on both women and a man. So keep in mind, whatever your website is that you're designing for, you want to have pictures that match that brand or that aesthetic, if that makes sense. So you can also get these from Canva if you want to. Canva also has plenty of free stock photos you can use. Um, now what I'm doing is going ahead and gathering all of the colors out of each one of the pictures that I am using so that they match my brand's aesthetic perfectly. So if you already have your brand colors mapped out in your brand kit, that's perfect. If not, you can just pull colors from the photos like you guys see me doing here. I'm just duplicating these circles and arranging them in the way that each different color that I may want to incorporate is already laid out for me. So all I have to do is go ahead and copy and paste that code and it's done. I really like to look at this because it just... For some reason, it gives me an idea of what the colors are and how I can make them mesh well. I'm using purple and brown here, so I want to make these two coordinate and flow in a really aesthetic way, but also make them look professional. So this just helps me keep organized. So I highly recommend trying this out when you are designing your web design photos. And one thing I love about Canva is it just pulls the colors out of the pictures for you. So you don't have to use the dropper tool like you might have to in Photoshop. Canva will already pull the colors for you. So all I'm doing, like I said, is just putting them into a circle and aligning them in between both of the photos that I'm using. Next, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this page because this is going to be our reference page. The top page is where we're going to actually create our design. Page two is usually where I pull my pictures from and again, my colors. So now we have a blank workspace. We got to pick a background color. For starters, I think I want to use this purple. Um, eventually, I will change that once I realized that it wasn't going to work for what I was doing. But pick one of the five or six colors that you have pulled from your photos and decide which background color you want to use. Now, keep in mind, you do want this to be professional. So you have to make sure that your font colors, the pictures of the models that you're using or the um, the jars that you're using, if you're doing a cosmetic website, that everything meshes well. Now, I do like to use this little blur effect and drag that into the workspace just so that it gives us some dimension. We're going to lower the transparency a little bit so that it is not as bright, but it is a white blur that I use. This, these are pro features, you guys, so I would highly recommend you sign up for Canva Pro. If you don't have it already, click that link down below. I got y'all. So yeah, I got me a white blur circle out on the right-hand side of this workspace. Like I said, I got a purple background. I'm going to duplicate the first model's image and remove the background so that way it is just the image of the model. And give Canva their tens because... Removing the background in Canva is seamless. It's way easier than even Photoshop. Um, yeah, you're just going to click background remover and Canva does all the hard work. Now, here's where I realized this is probably not going to work for my background color because it matches exactly the sweater. I did want to use purple, but obviously that's too close to the sweater's color. So we're going ahead for the tan neutral look since that's going to blend well with both the purple and the brown. I'm just adjusting the sizing of both of my pictures and then going to add a shadow onto the model. So you click edit, you scroll down to effects, shadows, and then you click which one of the variations of shadows you want to use. They have a glow, a drop, an outline, curved. I normally just go with a drop shadow and you can change how much you want it to be blurred, the angle, and how big of a shadow you want on your picture. 
So full customization, but I do like to have a shadow just so it pops off the background. I don't want it to look flat. I like a nice pop of dimension off of the background. Doing the same thing with the other photos on the right hand side. Just going to duplicate those, remove the background from both, and then we're going to add shadows. I just love how easy Canva makes everything for me. Like I'm literally just clicking a button and then background removed. So for these images, you can play around with how you want them orientated. I kind of want to give it, um, I want these to appear as if they're closer to the user of the website. Whoever's viewing the website, I want it the right hand side to appear as if the images are being displayed closer, if that makes sense. So as you can see, I zoomed out a little bit so that it's more of the sweater showing and less of the actual model because granted the models are cute. I am trying to advertise my sweater. So I want to make sure that the sweater is the main focal point. Again, I'm going to add a shadow to the back of these images as well. We can lower the intensity of the blur so that it's not so intense. As you can see, it's like a sharp black edge around that. You can also change the color of your shadow. It doesn't have to be black, but I wanted to go ahead and lower that intensity so it doesn't appear as harsh. That looks a lot better. So for the very next part of the video, I'm going to show you guys how to add your text onto your website design photo. So what I did is go ahead and use the font impact. I'm not really sure what happened. Me showing you guys how I actually formatted this font. But once you click your font, what you want to do is click the uppercase tab. As you can see, that is in purple at the top. And then you want to click line and spacing and space the letters out as far apart as you like. So that part wasn't showing. I'm not sure what happened to that footage. I'm sorry about that. But all I'm doing right here is just arranging the text behind and in front of and just making sure I like where the font is and play around with this. You guys get creative, see what you like. Um, one thing I love about designing graphics for a website is it's completely up to you and what you like. So you have the customization to do whatever. Um, I eventually went ahead and deleted the picture of the guy. I decided I just wanted to have one picture on this side so it didn't look too cluttered. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the Styles by Renee text, and I'm going to change that to say the latest. It's because this is a fashion brand, obviously you want to be marketing your latest, most trendy, most viral, most new arrivals, or whatever have you. So I put the latest, and I'm looking for a font that is bold, but I also kind of want the font to be a little bit tall. So one thing I do like about Canva, you guys, as you can see, thousands of different fonts to choose from. I mean, there are literally so many. If you don't want to use what Canva offers, I highly recommend you go to dovefont.com, purchase you a font that is paid, and then you can upload your font into your Canva um, account. But so I end up working with this, uh, what is the name of this font that I end up going with? There was a font that I end up going with that I really, really like. I can't remember the name. I'm probably going to show you guys in a second. But I got confused because I couldn't find something that matched exactly what I wanted. I wanted tall, but like bold and thick. It was, I was being very particular in this part of the video. But anyway... You can also use the Canva search bar at the top of your font to actually type in what you're looking for. So like you see me guys doing, I did thick and look at all the fonts that came up, the very thick and bold fonts. Eventually I found one that I liked. So yeah, it looks like I ended up keeping the same font. The impact font is the one that we are sticking with. Once I have found it, like I said, I'm just going to space back the letters so that they're not as far spread apart. I'm going to drag the corner so that this gets bigger, place it over top of the model right here. And now we're about to get fancy and now I want to add some effects to make this really pop because right now the text is cute, but there's more that we can do. So duplicate your text, go to effects, you want to click hollow and then once you have your font um, hollowed, you can change the thickness of it. What that does is just remove the spaces in between the fonts. You want to send it backwards because we're going to arrange this in a way where you can see only par partially the full, um, the full block of text. I'll show you. So... What you're doing is sending the hollowed um, font out into the front and then placing your normal font into the back behind the picture of the model. And it'll take a second. You have to play around with this a little bit, but the layers of each different thing really matter here. So make sure you duplicate the picture of the model as well, because we want the model to be both behind and in front of the text and give that like the font is running over top of, but also going behind the model. So I duplicated the picture of the model and now I'm making sure that she is layered in the right position. So I sent her backwards. And then we're going to bring that hollowed out front, hollowed out font, I'm sorry, into the front of the model again. This part gets a little bit tricky because you're just playing around and arranging and arranging and arranging. But you'll get it. You'll get it. 
Eventually, you're going to see something that looks like this. Once I send this thick font to the back, you will see it look like this. Isn't that so cool? It's really simple to do. I really like the way that this stands out. Now you can see Styles by Renee needs to also have a duplication. So I'm going to bring that forward. And then I think instead of duplicating that and doing the same font, we're going to add something different to that to make it pop off the picture as well. But so far, so good. Give me a thumbs up if you guys are following along so far. If not, go ahead and comment down below and tell me, girl, do another tutorial because I'm lost. <laughs> so what I'm looking for is a square shape so that I can put that behind the Styles by Renee font. I accidentally clicked this text box and thought I was going to use that and I decided not to. But if you wanted to, a cool idea would be to use something like this and put text us at code 6341 or whatever the case may be to get a discount or to do something like that. If you're selling anything online, texting or having your customers be able to text your website, a number one way to attract customers and gain sales. I've done it before. It works wonders. So anyway, I got this brown text box and I'm going to change it so, the so that it matches the brown of the sweater didn't like the brown so we went with purple so we're going to put the purple behind there and i'm going to drag this out so that it matches i kind of want this to go like in between both the model and the font so i'm dragging it out a little bit and then i'm going to duplicate that and then i'm going to arrange it so that one of it one layer goes behind and one layer stays in front you'll see like so that looks really really nice i like that it even goes behind the blur so that white um, blur effect is behind it as well and so far y'all tell me we're not designing a professional website cover photo this looks so good so since we've gotten some of our fonts done now i want to add something to the left hand side of this graphic where there is the ladies in the purple sweater so i'm grabbing a circle and now since I've done purple on the right hand side to balance it out, we got to go brown. So I'm changing that circle to the brown that's in the sweater on the right. I'm going to drag that out, make it a little bit bigger. And again, doing the same process. I'm going to duplicate the model's photo so that she's both in front and behind the circle. And then we're going to add some text on top that says shop now. So I'm duplicating Styles by Renee so that it's the same font. Um, we're going to just type shop now. And if you don't like the spacing in the letters, again, you can go up to the right, to the toolbar in the top hand side, and you can just make sure that the letters are not spaced as far apart, which I think I did do. Yes, I did. Yep, so just drag your letter spacing so that the letters are a little bit closer together. Arrange them so that they look the way you want them to. I made them a lot bigger, and we're doing the same thing. We're going to duplicate this, go to effects, and we're going to hollow it out. I just feel like that makes it look... I don't know. I really like this, the way that this effect looks. So I'm changing the thickness of it and now do the same process that you did on the right hand side on the left. Arrange your layers so that there is one layer behind and one layer in front of the model so that it gives that effect um, of the letter being like missing. Okay, we're almost done. As you can see, the P and the W are both hollowed out. I zoomed in a little bit so you guys can see up close. And as I zoomed in, I did notice a couple of things about um, the thickness. I thought that I was a little too thin, so I did change that. So that's thicker and easily able to be read. And then also I noticed that my models were not properly aligned because we did duplicate them. So make sure that you are being very particular about that. Um, we want this to be professional, y'all. So got to get down to the details and so far so good i love this let me know what you guys think in the comment section below i think that's where we're going to end for this one but if you guys find this video useful or helpful please give me a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and i will see you guys in the next video love you guys peace